Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Bonnie Bully. Now, September is Heart Health Awareness Month. So on the show today, we'll be promoting a healthy heart. In the kitchen, we'll be making something fresh and healthy. Now, earlier on today, I got a heart age screening, and I'll be sharing the results with you in just a bit. But joining us first up are two experts who'll be chatting to us about why health, Heart Health Awareness Month is important. Heart disease is still the number one killer in the world, and we all have to be aware of the steps we can take to prevent it. So joining our conversation today is Professor Naidu, the CEO of the Heart and Stroke Foundation, which plays a leading role in the fight against preventable heart disease and stroke, with the aim of seeing fewer South Africans suffer premature deaths and disabilities. And with her is dietitian and exercise physiologist, Gabriel Eckstein. Welcome to The Loft. Thank Lovely you. to have you with Good us. Afternoon. Thank yeah. you so much. So what is this month's Heart Health Drive? Yes, I'll take that one. So this month, what we're starting with is every month is heart, uh, every year is heart awareness, uh, but we're doing a slightly different angle this year. We're also focusing on kids' hearts, uh, which is something we can't prevent like we can many other heart diseases. And we have a new campaign that we're launching uh, called Smart Little Hearts. So that's about creating awareness about what we call congenital heart disease, which is heart disease that kids get born with, uh, so it doesn't develop later on, uh, and how to recognize it, and also how to treat it better, and how to treat those children better as they grow up. And that's yeah. all what our heart awareness yeah. Pain and fundraising is all about. Yeah. And why is it so important for us to be aware of congenital heart disease in children? Yes, I think it's something that, you know, when we think heart disease, we think uh, obviously adults, um, but it's something that happens in children and actually surprisingly common in children. Wow. Um, it's the most common birth defect that you can get in a child. Uh, so we're talking about numbers about one in a hundred children, uh, which essentially means 3,000 children every year in South Africa will get born with a heart defect. Wow. Uh, some of them obviously more serious, some of them less serious, but most of them will need corrective surgery they'll need care for the rest of their life yeah. um, and how early we uh, the earlier we detect the heart disease and diagnose the heart disease the better we can manage it yeah. uh, so that's really what we want to do is uh, tell parents how to look out for it how to ask for it when they have a scan when they're in the hospital uh, and then also to improve the treatment of it uh, and what we're doing with our fundraising is also going into the public hospitals at this seven cardiology units uh, government hospitals countrywide so we want to upgrade those make them more child friendly for these kids that keep on going back and back to the Hospitals. Yes, yeah, mm. that's absolutely incredible. I mean, I didn't mm. know the number was so high. Mm. Now, when it comes to adults, what are the leading causes of heart disease and strokes? Right. So what we need to do is to look at an individual very holistically. Hmm. So uh, rightfully so, a lot of emphasis is placed on these preventable risk factors, such as eating eating habits, you know, like having too much salt in your diet or eating too much, which leads to obesity and so on. And all those risk factors then link to hypertension, which is actually the most uh, important factor in eventually somebody having right. or being affected by cardiac uh, disease and stroke. However, if you kind of go a step back, if you look at the person holistically, you, each one of us are born with a particular genetic makeup. So then we have a particular genetic predisposition. Right. So it's not just about knowing your numbers about you know, whether I'm hypertensive and so on, but it's also having the knowledge of what is my family history. And so if I know that I've got a long family history of cardiac disease and stroke, then it is really individual should take responsibility wow. to then take those extra precautionary measures. Yeah. Um, and so yes, it is, you know, it's a very linked to lifestyle. So if you know and you act on what you know, so you know you have to have a relatively healthy lifestyle, despite having a genetic predisposition, then it is, it's preventable, uh, you know, then your, what we in, in public health terms call morbidity and mortality. So then you'll decrease the risk of death from these diseases mm -hmm. and you will decrease the um, sort of dysfunctional um, associations that are linked to cardiac disease in the body. So less disability right. that's, and a better quality of right. life. So it's complex, it's not that simplistic, but I think suffice to know that you know, you're, you have a genetic component, but you also have lifestyle factors which you can act on. Yes. Yeah, yeah. to prevent. Yeah. I mean, it, it is complicated, but it's also yeah. scary. I find a lot of people don't want to find out that information until it's too late. Sure. So what are the heart disease stats in SA? How healthy are we? Right, so if I could, so let, let's just focus on hypertension, because that has been found scientifically to be the 
most important factor associated with ultimately getting cardiac disease and stroke. Okay. So not so long ago, there's been a national representative study in the country. So we can safely say that they're not little studies where we're just making sort of generalizations. Mm -hmm. This has been done across the country and it's quite alarming because Whoa. what we found is that about 20% of um, individuals 15 years and older are pre-hypertensive. So, you know, if they're not careful, they obviously will lead to the um, point of becoming hypertensive. Why are those numbers so high specifically? In well, South unfortunately, we're a very fat nation and it's very gendered because women tend to be more obese than men, men are. Wow. Um, yeah. And so, uh, you know, and if you disaggregate by age, so in other words, if you start to then understand it at a little bit of a deeper level, the older you get, the more prone you are. So the m older you get, you should be looking after your You should be getting even thinner. More. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and exercising more and yeah. so on yeah. and so forth. Now, mm. Gabriel, how important is diet to preventing heart disease? I think, you know, when we're talking the main risk factors, there's obviously the genetic component, and then we've got the three legs, which is essentially diet, exercise, smoking. Uh, we can add others to those as well, alcohol abuse, uh, stress factors, but those are probably the three most preventable causes. Uh, and the World Health Organization is now saying diet is probably the most important one, and probably the biggest one that we can change. So your diet is, is really key. Obviously diet also leads to obesity and diet or a poor diet and a poor diet can also lead to high blood pressure and yeah. also lead to diabetes. And yeah. those three conditions, diabetes, blood pressure, um, those are very, very important risk factors for heart disease. So we think diabetes, we don't think heart disease, but that triples your risk of heart disease. Yeah. So uh, diet has a very direct role between yeah. the three of them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just from a socioeconomic perspective, could, could poverty relate to heart health? Because when people are poor, mm. they just want to eat mm. what they can mm. find, mm. and sometimes that's not the healthiest choice. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that question. Really, really important one in the context of South Africa. Mm. Because if you just take like a simple model, right, you've got the individual factors, which is, includes socioeconomics. So you, if you have a predisposition for cardiac disease and you're poor, and you, your environment in which you live is not enabling. So, the, you know, there aren't enough resources. Right. And then what happens is you, obviously, there's more than enough evidence to say that the social determinants of health really determine ultimately health outcome. Mm. So mm. then it determines disease outcome. Now, the one thing which I'm really passionate about in this whole scheme of things also is that what we call sort of mediating factors. So all of the factors mm. we've talked about mediate between the individual and what you have and don't have uh -huh. and um, and health outcome which is then the cardiac disease and stroke right. added to this so if you poor and you have mental health difficulties so stress depression yes, anxiety, anxiety there's been a very strong link also between mental health indicators and cardiac disease wow. so if you have all that you know it's like a triple or quadruple burden yes. that's going to ultimately then end up wow. with the... So, yeah, it's a very important yeah. factor. Well, yeah. thank you so much for all this yeah. information. It's really eye-opening. We're going to cross over to the kitchen and try and teach people how to have healthier hearts. <laughs> sure. <laughs> After the break, we'll be taking a look at the results of the heart age screening I did earlier, and we make something healthy in the kitchen. Welcome back to Afternoon Express on SABC3. Now, as promised earlier, we're keeping your heart healthy and we'll be making something quite fresh and healthy. Yeah? Mm -hmm, definitely. So we've been talking a lot about brying and grilling and all these amazing things that make South Africa South Africa. <laughs> but today we've been talking about being healthy. So we're going to merge the two together and we're going to create a bit of a light and okay. fresh take on a burger. Yeah, we're going to merge our culture with our health awareness, mm -hmm, right? Totally. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is I've got these amazing chicken patties from Willie's. And as you said, you haven't really these seen them around. New. I haven't seen these They've, around. It, it, it's, it's quite new on shelves, but it's absolutely amazing. What I like doing with these as well is breaking them into half or into little balls, little chicken dumplings in soup. Yes. But I mean, we're coming out of the soup season, but I mean, still, yeah, still. Yeah. So uh, keeping it really light, I'm gonna use my griddle pan, but totally do this on the braai. Okay. The little bit of olive oil just to coat the chicken. Mm-hmm. 
and then that simply just goes down on That's your griddle pan. That's super healthy. It is. I mean, <laughs> hit it with a little bit of salt as well. Actually, if you can pass the salt to me. Salt. Okay. Just a little bit. That's enough. And the grill pan has to be smoking, smoking hot. Right. So you just whack it down. And then, as I always say, once the meat hits the griddle, leave it alone. Walk away. Walk away. <laughs> so I've put this one down a few minutes ago, but we're going to try and get the perfect crosshatch on our burger patties today. So what you do is you insert it on the side. These look quite lean. They are quite lean. Yeah. And then you turn your spatula 90 degrees and you put it down. And oh, that way you end up with these perfect crosshatch. <laughs> and like you said, yes, being lean is amazing. There's not a lot of intramuscular fat in the chicken that they use for these patties. So you're getting the pure lean meat, which Protein, is what you want. Yes, yeah. yes. So cool, okay. I'm going to let that go for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. So look, I've got these that I've done earlier. So what I'm going to do is, I've got this amazing summer salad already. Okay. So this is great. I need to pass you that? If you can, right on the end. When it comes to burgers, the mm -hmm. toppings are almost as equal Essential. as the as the patty. So <laughs> what I've done is, it's an amazing cheat. This is also part of the Eat In for 150 promotion, as well as our chicken patties. So everything you want to put in your burger is already in here. Wow. No need for extra chopping. It's done. So Good. I've got my burger buns over there, mm -hmm. and they've already been toasted. So can I ask you if you can just separate the tops from the bottoms? Absolutely. And while, I'm do while you're doing that, I'm going to turn this one over here. Can I, can I pass smell. you the bottoms? We can actually plate it all up in the plate. Oh, Let's just do that. Perfect. So. Well toasted. Nice one. Thank you. If you can pass the mayonnaise on the side. This is actually great for a picnic. If you can grill the burger patties before you leave the house, take this with you. Mm -hmm. And then you're so good to go. You can build these. Make sure I get the bottoms. You can build these wherever you're having a picnic. Yeah. That's the Th bottom. That's the bottom. Cool. So that's good. So what I do now is just pick from the selection that I've got here. So I've got some dill, I've got some lettuce. So, I mean, your boys, do they like beetroot? Um, yeah, I think they don't mind it. I mean, I think it depends how it's presented. Like when it's all curly-whirly like then that, cool. they'll love it, yeah. Cool, so let's give one some extra curly-whirly beetroot. <laughs> okay, perfect. And then one's gonna get some extra curly-whirly... Carrots. Carrots. And this is really fun because, I mean, we've spoken about how kids love playing with their food and textures and colors. And yes. like a lot of the days where we say, don't play with your food. Playing with your food are is they, so vital. Are those days gone? <laughs> Absolutely gone. You need to be playing with your food. So more lettuce goes on there. Okay. So you see what I mean by everything that you need is already in here. This I see is this. is so amazing. And if you want to pop in a tomato in there, you can. Absolutely. And there's also some fresh herbs. We've got some parsley in there. So they're really getting everything they should be that getting. they should be getting. Cool. So, next part is real simple. Just pop okay. your patties on there. I'm not even going to use a spatula. Yeah, that's easy. It's very easy. And if you could pass me the lemon. A little mm. bit of lemon what goes a long way. I'm going to squeeze it over the chicken patties. Over the chicken. This is a healthy burger. It is, but again, we've always spoken about how lemon brings out the flavor of everything else mm -hmm. in your dish, and mm -hmm. exactly the same goes for this. So if you could pass the mm. knife, and it's a little bit of acidity, just lifts absolutely everything. Lovely. Yeah, it's quite tangy it tastes. It really. is, and it goes so well with the sweet carrot, the sweet beetroot, the tomato in there, the herbs, and of course, your chicken patties. So that is your amazing summer health-inspired chicken burger done. Wow, that's quite fresh, and that is our keyword fresh. Um, please SMS that keyword fresh to 33650. There you'll get the link to the ingredients and the full recipe. And the SMSs cost 1 Rand 50. No free SMSs apply. And if you've missed any of this, here's a quick recap. Yummy. I certainly can't wait to dig into those healthy chicken burgers later on. 
Now, when we live an unhealthy lifestyle, we put strain on our hearts, and this can cause it to age faster, so to speak. Things like smoking, cholesterol, and obesity can all add to this. That's why doing a heart age test can be very useful in finding out what condition your heart is in. We're back with dietitian and exercise physiologist Gabriel Exton. So, tell us what heart age means. What is an heart age? Yeah, so you have different risk factors for heart disease. As you mentioned, your cholesterol, blood pressure, etc. But how do they work together to make you healthier or less healthy. And that's what the heart age is. It's an illustration of how they work together. Uh, and it's not, you know, it's a, it's a tool for awareness, but it also is actually backed by science. It's using the same formulas and background numbers as a doctor would basically use for clinical guidelines yeah. to tell you how do your risk factors, which includes your age, your family history, uh, your weight, your cholesterol, blood pressure, all work up. And then it tells you compared to the average person of your age, what is your heart age? So right. is it younger, is it older than you actually are? Yeah. And that just basically illustrates your risk of heart disease. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, people out there can do the test themselves. They just go to the little okay. website. It's uh, www.heartage.me. And they can punch in their own numbers, which they can check at the pharmacy, and they can see what, uh, how old their hearts are. Yeah. Um, but I think the, the numbers underlying it, people don't know. Uh, in South Africa, about half of people with high blood pressure don't know they have high blood pressure, wow. uh, which is a scary thing. And it's because there's no overt symptoms. You can walk around with a high blood pressure obviously high cholesterol too without knowing uh, and that's you know as a big risk factor for getting yeah. heart disease uh, you know in the future yeah well earlier on i did a heart age screening should we take a look yes let's do <laughs> right so you've just checked my height and measured my weight what are we actually testing here for today yeah, so we're going to look at all your other vitals, those important numbers that you need to know to know your heart health. Uh, so we're going to do your blood pressure levels, your blood cholesterol levels, including your good and bad cholesterol. And then we're going to end off with your blood sugar levels. So she's just taking your blood pressure, uh, which will take a minute. And obviously what we're looking for there is a normal blood pressure okay. uh, under 140 over uh, 90. Uh, and you should be fine, hopefully. We'll see hopefully. in a second. Yeah. <laughs> I already weigh more than I thought I did. <laughs> I think your weight is absolutely fine. I don't think that's a concern. You have quite a lot of equipment here. What's it all for? Yeah, so obviously she's busy with a blood pressure machine. And then we've got the little lancets there. We're going to prick your finger just for one drop of blood. Okay. Uh, I hope you're not too scared. Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to take your um, cholesterol with that uh, and also your blood sugar with the same drop of blood. Uh, so we don't need much more than that. So what can I actually do with this information that I find out here today? Once you have your information, obviously we know if there's a problem. Uh, so we can see, do you have high blood pressure or high cholesterol? Uh, do we need to do something about it lifestyle wise sometimes treatment wise we, uh, if it's very high you have to start treatment and then what we're going to do today but later on as well is we're going to take those numbers put them all together so we can see what is your heart age compared to your real age uh, and that's just a way to illustrate how all those risk factors compile and increase your risk or decrease your risk mm -hmm. did you feel that was it so I felt that <laughs> where can one get all these tests done if you already have a condition like blood pressure or cholesterol then you obviously go to your doctor and your doctor will tell you how often to come back. But for anybody else, walk into the pharmacy, get them done. Literally, it will take you 10, 15 minutes to do all of it. And then you should do them fairly frequently. Blood pressure every year, uh, cholesterol about every three years or so. Uh, sugar levels, if you're not overweight, you don't have abdominal obesity, you don't have to do it so frequently. But if you do have that or you're over the age of 45, then you should do it every year as well. Blood pressure is spot on. Yeah. 126 over 89, okay. which is actually quite good. Here we go. So now we can see. Do we want to discuss them now? Absolutely. Okay, so let's see. So your total cholesterol is 4.9, uh, and we want that to be below 5. So okay. it doesn't have to be 3. As long as it's below 5, the, it's good. Um, and then your blood sugar levels are absolutely normal, given that you haven't eaten in the last few hours. Uh, and then no smoker, no family history, which also uh, you yeah. know, adds to your risk. Yeah. Uh, so we'll go pop them into the con uh, calculator, and then we'll share with the audience later on uh, what your heart's what age my is. my heart's age mm. is. Well, there you have it. We're about to find out what my heart age is. So what were my results? Well, your, all your numbers were good. Uh, your blood pressure was good. Your Yay. cholesterol was good. Uh, <laughs> weight was good. Um, so without naming your um, age here on national television, uh -huh. um, you are seven years younger, or your heart is seven years younger than you are. Yeah, wow. so that's excellent. That's actually really good. Yeah, I actually quite like that. Seven's mm. my lucky number, so <laughs> that's all good and well. <laughs> no, that's really good. So judging from that, what am I doing right or wrong in my life? 
Well, what, you know, what's nice what we can see is from your cholesterol profile is we can see your good cholesterol levels are quite mm. good, uh, which probably illustrates that you're quite active yes, um, and you're eating healthy, probably lots of good fats in your diet as well. And those things help to keep your good cholesterol up while your bad cholesterol is not too high. Uh, and then obviously blood pressure uh, is very um, important, your fruit and veg intake, your salt intake. And there's also a very strong hereditary aspect to high blood right, pressure. And that's why it's right. so important to get it tested. You know, I can't look at you and say, your blood pressure is going to be fine. You could be fit and healthy, and yet you could be, have a high blood pressure, but obviously yours is bang on. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens when people have an older heart than their age? Can it be reversed, so to speak, or made younger? Yes, in a way. A I mean, Botox? <laughs> <laughs> you know, obviously, because it's just a, you know, an administrative tool, you can improve it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at those individual parameters, and if your blood pressure is high and you do something to it to improve it, uh, then your heart age will, in fact, come down. And, you know, with all those factors, uh, there's a large lifestyle aspect to it. Uh, we say normally about 80% of heart diseases are what we do. Now, 20% is genetics. And uh, so, you know, there's a, a lot you can do. Uh, some people will need to start treatment. If their blood pressure is really high, if cholesterol levels are really high, they do need to start uh, medical treatment. And obviously, they need to then visit a doctor for that. Uh, but if they're in that kind of in-between area, then there's so much you can do uh, yes. with you know, being fitter, stopping smoking and eating healthier. Yeah. Thank you so much, Gabriel, for all the insightful information and for doing my heart screening. Yeah, it's a pleasure. <laughs> so go get your heart age test done. Don't leave it too late. And after the break, we continue our conversation around heart health. And we take a look at what factors the Heart and Stroke Foundation consider when endorsing a food product. Stay right there. Welcome back. Now, today we're all about promoting a healthy heart. As September is Heart Health Awareness Month, we're back again with Professor Pamela Naidu, the CEO of the Heart and Stroke Foundation. Welcome back. Thank you. So tell us about the heart mark. It's probably the one icon that people are most familiar with when it comes to the work that the Heart and Stroke Foundation does. What does the program entail? Yeah, so it's one of our flagship programs. You're quite right about that. And um, in fact, we did a consumer survey and found that most people do recognize the logo. Yeah. So what happens is to get the endorsement to have that logo on your product, um, companies would approach us and we would then, um, we have a set criteria which we have um, put together and it's also okayed by the Department of Health in the country. Right. And it obviously follows global standards as well, like yeah. WH, World Health Organization and so on. And then we put it through the set of criteria and we sent it for, send it off for lab testing to ensure yeah. that what you're saying is in the product right. and that is healthy is actually there in yeah. the correct proportions and so on. Yeah. And so once you meet the criteria and our set of dietitians also very um, helpful in that process, yeah. We then endorse it, and then you're able to put it onto your product. Wow. It obviously sounds quite rigorous. I mean, it's quite a, a grueling process. Yeah. How many people do you find or manufacturers want the heart mark on their product? Oh, we do have a really large number. You know, we anything up to, at this point in time, anything up to about 60. But remember that there's these multi sort of nationals that carry different brands within right. the... Right. Yeah. So if you sort of multiply sort of... 50 to 60 multinationals, and then in those, you know, say 10 of those are big multinationals, then they've got the sub-brands. So it's quite a quite a number of people. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And they also some of them are global brands as yes. well. Yes. Mm -hmm. You mentioned earlier that you carried out a survey mm -hmm. to test people's perceptions of the heart mark. Correct. What are the interesting facts did you find? I think the interesting fact is basically that people recognize it and that people actually, um, it sort of subtly changed people's behavior as well. Like you don't have to directly say you have to buy those products with the logo on them. Yeah. Uh, but you know, because it's become such an institutionalized brand or logo on food products, that people are actually looking for it. Yeah. 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 Um, now, yeah. we as consumers are constantly inundated with information about nutrition, what's healthy, what isn't, so much sure. so that we get confused because it also seems to change all the time. Mm -hmm. But what is a healthy diet? What does it entail? Right. So, um, you see, I think that we we are told oftentimes by dietitians you've got to have the colors from each food group, mm -hmm. and you know, and then the Mediterranean diet is always touted as the healthiest diet mm -hmm. to have. But you know, we have to also take into account cultural factors and so on. So I think that the idea is not to uh, put people or food in a way that 
makes them sort of sneak behind and eat the <laughs> foods they like. Really, I think the philosophy is everything in moderation. However, there are certain types of products or ingredients, I should say, that you really have to look out for. So, I mean, one of the, the recent developments in the country was the um, tax on sugar-sweetened beverages, for example. Mm. You know, so that, that definitely sugar is a major cause of a lot of ill health. Yeah. And then, of course, we also, um, we run at the Heart and Stroke Foundation, also in collaboration with the National uh, Ministry of Health, uh, the Salt Watch campaign. So salt is another major factor that contributes yes. to hypertension. Right. So, you know, what we're trying to do is to target five grams uh, per day, mm -hmm. uh, ideally. Right. So, in fact, that's in process already. So we're hoping to have that legislated That's like also. a teaspoon, basically. Yes, wow. yeah, it's like a level teaspoon. Wow. Uh, and then, of course, a simple, simple, actually, because you should have um, lots of fruit and veg, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, smaller proportions of protein provided you, you do have that in your diet. Yeah. And, um, and everything in moderation. And, but it doesn't exist on its own because you've got to combine it with a bit of exercise yes. as well. Yes, wow. yeah. Okay, so I'm going to leave you for a few minutes. Yeah, I'm going to sure. go make us a very healthy sandwich. Right. And the product I'm going to use actually bears a heart mark. Oh, oh great. great. <laughs> what do we have here, Clem? So today we're going to make the ultimate steak sandwich and exactly like you said, look, the heart the mark heart is right mark. there. Yeah. So we're using the Sasco Plus, we're using this amazing cranberry bread. It's high in fibre. It is, it's so delicious. It's high in fibre and it's low GI. Yeah, yeah. So we're like killing all the birds, birds with one stone today. Yeah, yeah. So I've got my pan roaring hot. It I is crazy. So actually, would you like to drop the steak in the pan? Absolutely. Go for it. Let's Absolutely. see if you can get some flame today. Okay. Now, I'm definitely not going to get flame <laughs> because I'm safe in the kitchen. Okay, so amazing sizzle. Sound. It's singing. It is. So what I did was I just um, seasoned it lightly, lightly. We spoke mm -hmm. about salt. And it's got a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on the outside. And that goes into a dry pan. Don't add any extra oil to the pan because okay. it doesn't need it. Okay. So as I said, I've got the cranberry bread over here. We're going to slice that one up in a second. Okay. But to go with this, we're going to start off with... Let's do our, our little dill mayonnaise. What do you think? Yes, cool. let's. So, a bowl in the middle. We've got some chopped up um, dills or gherkins. Okay. And they go in. And then a little bit of Dijon. We love some Dijon. Oh, and these flavors go so well together. And then Mayo. some mayonnaise. And that's enough. Just mix it through. And if you want, you can chop up your dill quite chunky. Doesn't have to be this fine. I mean, the chunkier, the better, actually. Right. And that's amazing, that's Lovely. so good. So that's ready to go. But to go with it as well, I'll be a little bit of a caramelized onion. Yeah. So let's yeah. swap sides. Let's do this okay. together. There we go. I'm gonna take your steak off the heat just quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get that out over there. How do you make sure your steak doesn't get too hard? Your steak doesn't get too? Too hard. When you overcook it? Yeah. Well, you can kind of do the whole feeling, then you kind of feel it. Oh. There's this whole saying that you go like this, you can feel it's still rare, medium rare, medium uh -huh. well, well done. You feel how thick that is. So when it right. feels as thick as that, uh -huh. then you know it's cooked right through. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Then always cook your steak from room temperature, never from cold out of the fridge. What happens is you can have a perfectly cooked steak on the outside, but your inside's still cold from mm. the fridge. Mm. So let it always rest. Okay. So onions, as you can see, I've kind of caramelized them slightly already. Right. And into that goes a little bit of brown sugar. Yummy. Just a little bit. And then some balsamic vinegar. Okay. And again, it's a balance of sweet and um, the sweetness and the acidity from the vinegar that work so well together. Right. And that's going to start bubbling and reducing nicely. Yes. Oh, the smell of this vinegar. I'm loving all these flavors that are going to go into the sandwich. It is. That's so amazing. So I'm going to give this a quick turn. You've got that nice crust. And as I wow. said, when it comes to the meat, the crust is a must. Oh, I love that crust. Crust, crust is, a, is must, a must. Or else it's a bust. <laughs> we just added a new one on there. Cool. <laughs> So I'm going to get started on our sandwiches. Okay. So down goes our dull mayonnaise. Right. That goes over there. And can we add a little bit of olive oil to oh, it? Well, we've got the we fat want. that's already in the, in the mayonnaise. Yes, okay. You've got a bit of extra fat in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot to slice up my steak. So let me just do that quickly. Just shift these to the side real quick. You can just put this whole steak in my sandwich. You absolutely can. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to slice through the center. Okay. And I hope you like a little medium rare. 
I love a little medium rare. I mean, that is like the I best way. I my steak well done. I just never have I it I know, who way. does that though? Yummy, yummy. Perfect. Look at that. Look yummy at that. piece of fat in the middle. I know, and that's good. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's a natural, Speaking natural animal. Speaking of heart health. <laughs> yeah. Just give this a bit of a shake. Okay. That goes Juicy. on there. Wow. So you could absolutely toast the Sasko bread before the time with a bit of extra crunch. Mm. But um, I haven't done that today. I just want that amazing sauce from the onions and the steak to cook through to heat it up. Oh, oh. Scrumptious. Can you pass that black plate to me, please? Absolutely. Oh my goodness, the smells in here. It smells so amazing. How about we just secure it? Because these guys are, are big. They're going to go flying around everywhere. Mm -hmm. okay. And I can, I can smell those dills that we got in there as well with the pickle. Oh, it's amazing. I'm drooling. I'm just <laughs> staring at this sandwich like... Mm. <laughs> Last one. There we go. What do you think? Okay. I think that's absolutely amazing. I can't wait to dig into that. What would your ultimate sandwich be filled with? And what Sasko bread variety would you use? For more delicious sandwich ideas, log on to the Sasko website or visit their Facebook page. Afternoon Express and Sasko are giving you the chance to win a Sasko product tamper and toaster valued at 2,000 Rand. Simply cook a dish using any Sasko product, take a picture of your dish with the product used and post it onto the Afternoon Express Facebook page along with the name of your creation and you could be a winner. T's and C's apply. We'll be right back with more health advice from dietitian Kelly Schroeder. Welcome to the Fresh Pack Natural Goodness Series. We regularly need assurance that we're making healthy choices for ourselves and for our families. Fortunately, with the natural goodness of Fresh Pack, you know you're doing just that. Good nutrition is key in achieving optimal health, but how do we know we're eating and drinking the right things and how does our diet choice affect our bodies? Joining us today to give us insight is our favorite dietitian and chef, Kelly Schroeder. Welcome back, Kelly. Hi, Bonnie. Nice to be here. Yeah, lovely to have you with us. So, what kind of foods should we be taking in every day to ensure that we're keeping a healthy diet? All right. So, a healthy diet means maybe different things for different people. It kind of depends a little bit on your individual requirements. So, when we're looking at what a good diet means for anybody, let's say I'm seeing you in my practice and I want to work out what you need, it would yeah. be enough energy, fat, protein to make sure that you're getting through the day, it means foods that you enjoy eating and finding a balance between meeting your requirements but also doing the things that you need to do for health. It means managing any risks that you may have yeah. so that we prevent future disease. And it means doing something that feels like you're putting a little bit of effort into it, but it's not all effort that you can actually enjoy it at the same right, time. Right, right, absolutely. And what effects does it have on our body when we don't take in enough of the nutrients we need? We need so many different nutrients all the time. So it's not just about the energy that you get. We need protein and energy for moving and building muscles, for example. But you also need many different micronutrients for all of the different reactions that go on all the time in your body. You have digestive processes going on, you've got muscular contractions, mm. you have your brain working, you've got your heart beating, you have so many different things, your hormones, for example. There are so many systems in, your, in our bodies that are always functioning and always requiring little bits of nutrients yeah. as you go. So, for example, we think of calcium as being just about building bones, usually. But calcium is also used in all of our muscular contractions and in our nerves and in our brain. So if you don't have enough calcium, you can be deficient in all of those different areas in your body, not just in one. Are there specific foods we should be eating daily? All of us need energy and you can get energy from proteins and from fats and from carbohydrates. Okay. Generally, I advise that you aim not to eat just one type of those macronutrients, that you eat a balance because we thrive when we get a variety of different foods. Mm -hmm. So you need a good variety of different real whole foods rather than refined processed foods, right. ideally for good health. And then what you're also trying to do is get enough of the micronutrients that we need. And those come from our protein sources and our carbohydrate sources, but also from less energy dense kind of foods. So from the plants that we eat, from vegetables and from fruits. And how pedantic should we be in sticking to this regimen? I mean, are we allowed cheat days? I think so. I think a cheat day is quite fun every now and again. But usually I'm feeling quite motivated to make healthy choices. And I feel like the healthy choices that you make are kind of cumulative. So all of the little things that you do really do add, add up. up. 
but it doesn't mean that you have to be exclusively virtuous every day when you're choosing your foods. It just means that in balance, if most of the things you're choosing are serving you and working for your good health, the odd thing that you do for fun and socially is really not a problem. Yeah. Hydration is really important, but it is. just how important is it? We need water for so many different functions in our body. So just like you need micronutrients to help all of your systems function, you've got water in all of your cells, in your muscles, in your blood, in your saliva. We're losing water all the time when we're sweating. And even just sitting here, when you breathe, you're losing water. So you have to remain hydrated mm. by taking in more fluid. It doesn't just regenerate inside your body. Wow. So we, you know, it's recommended that you take in about six to eight glasses of water every day, but you can get that from other sources. Now, we also know that getting rid of toxins is really important for the body. Mm. And how does rooibos assist in this? Okay, so rooibos is a really wonderful way of hydrating our bodies. So just like water, it contains plenty of fluid and it doesn't contain caffeine. So you're not losing any of the water, which caffeine can make you do. So caffeine is what we call a bit of a diuretic. So when mm -hmm. you have a cup of coffee, you lose some of the water that you drinking along with that right. coffee. If you drink a cup of rooibos tea, you're more likely to absorb all that water and use it where it's needed. Oh. So we should be getting about six to eight glasses of water on average every day just for our normal healthy functioning. And if you're exercising and it's hot, then you might need some more fluid than that. Okay. So rooibos can make up part of that. What are some of the other health benefits of fresh packed rooibos? Yeah. Rooibos is a lovely source of antioxidants. So part of the color that you see when you're drinking rooibos is the antioxidant potential that it has. Wow. So that's nice to think about with fruits and vegetables as well, that all the colors provide beautiful phytonutrients that mm. are really powerful antioxidants. Mm -hmm. So, and rooibos, I mentioned the caffeine and I mentioned the fluid. It also contains some trace elements, so some trace minerals and that, along with the antioxidants, means that it's actually a beneficial drink. It's not just something that tastes nice. Wow. Thank you so much, Kelly. These are always so informative and definitely put in that guilt. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh Pack Rooibos is all about choosing the healthy way. Whether you choose the classic range or the many flavored or herbal options, such as soothing honey or calming chamomile, it's easy to enjoy all the beneficial antioxidants, no caffeine, and of course, the natural goodness of Fresh Pack Rooibos. And it's delicious served hot or cold. If you'd like to win a fresh pack hamper consisting of a selection of delicious teas, then SMS the keyword fresh pack to 33650. SMSs are charged at 1150. Teas and Cs apply and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. Until next week, keep yourself and your family happy, healthy, and enjoying life with the natural goodness of fresh pack rooibos. Welcome back here at the Afternoon Express on SABC3. Now, you must know by now how much we love fashion here. So we couldn't let an entire show go by without at least touching on it. Joining us is fashion aficionado Jackie Berger, who's had a long and respected career in fashion as editor of Our South Africa and now owner of her own business, Salon 58. She's also featured in the season's trinary styling videos, sharing her effortless style solutions for spring dressing. Jackie, welcome to the love. Thank you, Bonnie. You look absolutely gorgeous. I've gone on about your earrings, I've gone on about your shoes, and I was about to go on about your shirt, and I thought, just hold back, simmer <laughs> down. <laughs> All about simplicity and quality, yeah. which I think we're actually going to be discussing yeah. today. Speaking of which, how do you differentiate between style and fashion? Well, it's been a journey for me, really propagating the whole essence of style, where mm -hmm. it's very much about the wearer, um, it's about how you feel in what you wear and then fashion is, is really the seasonal changes that we tap into, but style foremost always. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, how would you advise a woman wanting to create a classic contemporary look? I think it's, it really always starts with quality and craftsmanship and always about the basics. I, I really always speak about having a canvas, having workhorses in your wardrobe, and then you can start playing and adding um, signature pieces. But it really starts with those key items that I always say they find you because they speak louder than yeah. anything else. Yeah. Um, and then invest in them, um, play with it in terms of discovering your own style voice, 
and the rest is easy. Right. Honestly, it is. <laughs> <laughs> now, mentioning key items and basics, what are the essentials that every woman should have in her wardrobe? Well, I'm a stickler for a white shirt. Absolutely. <laughs> um, because once again, coming back to what we spoke about earlier, your signature star, it's, it's honestly... It's if you find something that's cut perfectly, if you find something that's impeccably tailored, the quality of the fabric, once again, is so considered, then it flatters you in a way that transcends an overt way of dressing. Because we tend to today look at finding fashion items mm -hmm. um, that will say something about us, but it doesn't really, where it's if you invest in key items that you wear, it says a lot about you. And that for me is all about the allure of the woman and the way you carry yourself. Yeah, yeah. Now, quality versus quantity. How do we pri prioritise? So there's a very simple equation. It's cost per wear. Uh, we all like to shop at a sale, but beware because if we take an item, we pay 50 rands for it. Wear it twice, it will cost you 25 rands. If you b invest and you buy a beautiful tailored shirt for, say, 500 rand and you wear it over the next couple of years 100 times, it's five rand. Yeah. So that's when you sometimes feel a little bit tempted to buy something inexpensive, think twice, uh -huh. because you're wasting money. Wow, that's very accurate advice. Now, prints are quite big this season, and the mixing of prints is quite a mystery to some of us and quite daunting, actually. What are some of your style tips, according to the ones you've seen in your trainery video? Honestly, easy solution, Bonnie. Keep to the same color palette, the same tonal value, and also don't go too over top with, with prints. So, for instance, in the trinary video, we've got a small grid print and a small pin dot print. And the, the sort of subtlety of the two really gives a, a very nice modern mm -hmm. edge. Now, how do you think style can define a woman without saying a word? It's Absolutely, it starts with a woman first. Um, as I said earlier, we tend to want to rely on fashion to play the part, but it's an outer message where if we find comfort within who we are, if we find our essence, our confidence, then we will wear style very well. Wow. Now, Salon 58 is a big celebration of style and creativity. Tell us what we can expect at your next foray. We're working towards the, the final one for 2016. Um, a little bit of playfulness, um, a little bit of mystery. It's all about stardust. So it's about a celebration. And um, I think you tapped into it earlier, the, the whole essence of happiness, heart health happiness. And we sometimes forget to play. Um, we think it belongs to just children. Yeah. So at this one, we will be playing. Wow, sounds exciting. Thank you so much for joining us, Jackie. Thank you, Bonnie. <laughs> so check out the latest spring trainery collection online and in store at Woolworths now for all the classic pieces you need to build the perfect wardrobe. And for more of Jackie's styling advice, watch the trainery videos online on all Woolworths digital platforms. Let's go over to the table. <laughs> Wow, Clem, you've really outdone yourself. Thank you so much. <laughs> this looks amazing. And I know that you're a pescatarian, so I got your Willie's papaya and citrus salad. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh. So, what is a pescatarian? Well, it's a seafood diet and vegetarian combined. Not so seafood as in when you see food, you eat it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not. Okay. So, it's, you know, fish and. Very, very, healthy, yeah. very healthy. Very <laughs> healthy. So who's choosing what, guys? Please help sure. yourselves. They both look delicious, but I've got to go for that snack sandwich. I go think. for it. Yeah. Crazy. You, you Jackie, what would you like? You some I'm definitely going to be sharing your meal if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much to all our guests for joining us today and thank you for my screen test. Seven is definitely my lucky number, so I'm very excited about that. Glad you Don't miss out. the show tomorrow. I'll be getting a face profiling, which is a technique where someone can tell what's going on inside your body just by looking at your face. Sounds suspicious? Well, join us this time tomorrow to find out more. Happy eating.
Another feel-good production.